So today we are going to be comparing the Amazon 16 egg incubator or the Safeco incubator to the Hubevator 1583 model. There's a huge difference actually. This one here, the Safeco, it has no really good visibility uh, for watching the eggs. The Hubevator is a much larger incubator, at least the one that I have here. It holds up to 60 eggs and it has a really large window that you can actually view your eggs. I know that the Hubevators have really good ratings and I thought why not compare the hatch rates from this cheap Amazon incubator to the more expensive brand, the Hubevator. So these are pure Partridge Chanticleer uh, chicken eggs from our own backyard. Um, they are a Canadian heritage dual purpose breed. So I'm going to be putting all of these eggs into the Safeco mainly because I know we have pretty good results from it. I know how to work it, how to use it, and I really want some chicks from our Partridge Chanticleer. With the Hubevator, I have saved up quite a bit of our backyard mix. So there's a mix between um, Buff Orpingtons, the Sex Links, um, Bard Rocks, some Wine Dots. So first step is that you want to always warm up your incubators for a minimum of about 24 hours and that's just to get the temperature regulated in your incubators and the humidity levels um, so that when you put your eggs in they're ready to go and you don't have to worry about that fluctuation of um, temperature. So I've got it all ready to go um, I just have to put my water in. Um, in their bottle that you do get with this machine to start out, you only need to have a little bit of warm water in your incubator and that is because you don't want a high humidity level at the beginning. You only want about a 60% humidity level in any incubator at the beginning if you're doing your chicken eggs like I'm doing. And then once it's time to lock down your unit before hatch day, around day 18, 19, you want to increase that humidity level up to about 70 to 80. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this and um, we'll get those eggs in. So I only put about 20% uh, of the water in this uh, bottle into the bottom of my incubator. So to begin incubating our eggs, we want our temperature to be around 38 degrees Celsius. So we have all of our eggs in here. Now this little device here, um, it's a little vent, and that is for also helping regulate your humidity level. Now that we've got this set up, let's go over to the Hubevator and get that one set up. So this is a Hubevator model 1583. Now, as you can see, it is much larger than the 16 egg incubator we got off of Amazon. This one, I really like, you can fit a lot more eggs in. I think it's about 60 eggs. And I love the large window. As you can see, you can see all of the eggs in here um, and it's all made of styrofoam. I have found that this is actually keeping the temperature quite nice compared to the other one. There is a little bit of fluctuation about a, maybe a degree or a point of a degree difference. This one is keeping the heat in quite nicely. So I do like that aspect of this. Now this model, you can actually get an automatic egg turner. I'm borrowing this from a neighbor just to try it out. And it does not come with um, an automatic egg turner. So I will have to turn these eggs manually. The Hubevator is like a really well-known incubator and it has a lot of great reviews. There's lots of different models. This is an older model. This comes with, um, it's kind of like a screw Allen key type of a thing. And this is actually the thermostat. You turn it counterclockwise to increase the temperature and clockwise to de decrease the temperature. There's also a little red light in here that comes on when the temperature goes down a bit and it kicks in. The other thing is it's got a couple of little air holes as you can see here. There is a fan here, much like the Safeco incubator, it's kind of similar. But there's two air holes here. But it does come with a reservoir, it comes with on um, four compartments. I just put a little bit of water, I'd say maybe about a half a cup of water in the wet reservoir, um, just in the center one as well as the number four. I'm quite interested to see how this incubator does. Uh, they are a little more expensive compared to the cheaper model Amazon egg incubator. 
So I just had my husband and my daughter uh, go outside and collect the fresh eggs uh, from today. So it is best to use fresh if you can. I know that a lot of people get shipped eggs, so you do the best that you can, but using them right away is good. And sometimes you may not have enough to fill your incubator. And I'd rather do a bunch at a time than to stagger um, my eggs while putting them in because then you're not gonna have all of your chicks ready at the same time, which Personally, I would rather have a bunch ready at the same time. So we did collect our eggs over days and even a week, possibly more. And what I did is I selected the eggs that I wanted. So I've got some different shades um, that I know have come from different um, breeds of birds so I can have a good mix of my backyard birds. So another thing when you're picking out your eggs, if you're doing your own eggs from your own chickens, you want to make sure that you're picking the best eggs. So you don't want any deformed type of egg and you don't want any eggs that are too small. You want them to be a good size. I mean, these are large eggs. I've had people comment and say, you know, you shouldn't have large eggs. I must be putting hormones in. I do everything as natural as possible with my chickens. I don't give them hormones and things like that. So these large eggs actually come from my older birds, anywhere from two, three and four years old. And the smaller eggs that I have come from my year old birds, or even I have some birds that are actually under a year. So just picking the best eggs that you can and the ones that are not as dirty is the best. So now I'm excited. I'm going to get these eggs in the incubator and in 21 days, we should have a good flock of baby chicks. All right, so now we're gonna get the eggs in our Hoobivator incubator. So now that we have all the eggs in our both of our incubators, I'm pretty excited in 21 days we should have some hatching going on. I will have to say that so far I do like um, the Hoobivator. I like that it keeps its temperature quite nicely. I love that I can see in here. I don't really like the netting or the tray that's down there um, for when the, the chicks hatch. I think it's like a, a metal or plastic. I'm not overly fond of it, I have to say. Um, not used to the eggs just lying in there like that, but we'll see how it does. So we've reached day 10 of our incubation and comparing the Amazon incubator to the Hoobivator incubator. And I've been turning them every day. I'm finding that there is still a lot of heat. It seems to really keep the heat really well compared to the Amazon. Sometimes it fluctuates a little bit, but I do find this one definitely keeps the heat a lot better. The other thing is I've been adding water about a half a cup every two days. I've noticing that the water is evaporating and it's not too humid. So with the Amazon 16 egg incubator, um, I've been also adding water every second to third day with that one. Just a little bit of water, about 20 to 40 milliliters every few days. And that one seems to increase the humidity level a little bit more. This one seems to keep the humidity level down a little bit more. So I have noticed that, but I thought I'd bring you along, show you just how I manually turn them. It's super easy and I try not to allow a lot of the heat to um, be released when I lift the lid. So I'm just opening this up slowly. As you can see, they're all doing well. So I'm just doing some half turns and it just takes a few seconds out of your day. And you can do this as many times really as you want. I've been doing one to two times a day and we'll see how it turns out. The eggs are quite warm, so it's really good. And really all we're doing is we're just mimicking nature because the mother hen will, um, as some of the eggs get warmer, she'll move them. For instance, she'll move some out to the outer parts of her body and the outer ones she'll move in. And it's just mimicking what she's doing really. 
So it is day 10 and we are incubating our eggs. And for the purpose of this video, we did use the Amazon egg incubator candler. But for the purpose of this video, we decided to use the iPhone flashlight because we got a better view on our camera. And we wanted you to see what was really going on inside these eggs. Oh, did you see that? So there's definitely a chicken here. You can see the large vein there. There's the air sac down here. And this, I believe, would be the eye. Well, we have reached day 19 and you know what that means? It is lockdown day, which means that we need to take the eggs out, get the rollers out of the machine and lock it down for three to four days. Now we have a lot less eggs in here than when we started and that's because we did some candling. Next, we're gonna put the eggs back into the incubator. And they're just gonna lay right flat onto that mat and tray. So we have 10 eggs still in the incubator. I'm gonna put this hygrometer right here so that I can monitor the humidity level inside the machine. As you can see, it's right here. Well, we have just locked down our Amazon egg incubator. So we need to do it with the Hoobivator as well. So first things first, we don't need to take out any rollers because I don't have any. However, I do wanna put my slip mat in here as well. So I do need to take some of these eggs out. So I'm just going to remove the egg so that I can put that slip mat in. We also need to add hot water into the bottom tray to keep the humidity level up. I also have another hygrometer that I'm going to add inside the incubator as well. What I do really like about this Hoobivator is the big window. I can see everything that's going on and still all the styrofoam is here to keep the heat in. This thing has been a lot better with keeping the heat, the heat in. So the temperature does not fluctuate as much as the Amazon egg incubator. However, with that being said, we do need to decrease our heat just a little bit. And by doing that, we're just going to turn this little um, thing here and we're gonna turn it a little bit like that. And we will check the heat and make sure we have it. So first, let's remove these eggs. As you can see, we have a lot less eggs, like about half the percent of what we put in. And that is the process of candling. We figured out which ones were viable, which ones had something in it, and hopefully they all hatch. Now, just because there is something living in there, we've seen some blood vessels, it doesn't mean they're all gonna hatch. But most of them I think will. So before I put the slip, the non-slip mat in, I'm going to add warm water to the bottom tray of this incubator. Now I'm going to add the non-slip mat. So now we're just going to add the eggs back into the incubator. Now, this is the point in incubation where you might hear little peeps and you think you might hear a chick peeping away inside the egg. And you're probably wondering if you're hearing things or if that's normal. But I'm here to tell you that is completely normal and you do hear them. As we were removing these eggs, I could hear a few peeps coming from these eggs, which tells me that tomorrow I might have some little chicks all ready to go. We might have a chick by the end of the night. Last thing we need to do after the eggs are in is get our hygrometer in. And we're going to want this to be around 70% humidity level. And a little bit higher won't hurt, but Try not to go under 70. All I'm going to do is lay this flat because I've got lots of room. And because of this large window, 
I can watch and monitor my humidity level and add warm water as I need to in the bottom tray. Now I can hear them peeping in there, which means that we're probably about eight to 12 hours away from having chicks. I would also say that it is definitely um, worthwhile to get the turner. We don't have one. It's not a big deal to turn them ourselves, but they'll turn more often with an automatic turner as well as if you go away, you don't wanna forget about turning your eggs. Well, we've ended up bypassing even the hatch day. So these birds hatched, I wanna say about a week ago and they're doing really, really well. You can see this little guy is quite happy. I'm pretty sure we have a rooster here. I noticed what I liked about this one and what I liked about the other one. And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. One thing that I really like about this one is that it is yes encased in the styrofoam, but the whole unit itself is plastic, which um, there's no leaking. There's not any breaking of anything going on. Whereas with the Hubivator, it literally is a styrofoam incubator. And we found that while using that incubator, there must have been a lot of holes in it or cracks that you couldn't see because it was styrofoam. And underneath, we actually ended up having some mold. So I guess the downfall for that is the fact that it is all styrofoam. The other thing that I like about the incub this incubator is that it comes with rollers. The other one, rollers are an option to buy. Because we were borrowing this Hubivator incubator, we didn't end up having the rollers. And I did notice a huge difference. If you are wanting to get the Hubivator, I would definitely recommend getting the rollers with it because every time you're opening up the lid, you're allowing the moisture and humidity to come out. One of the cons that I noticed with this incubator, and I think we've talked about it before, is the humidity level. The humidity level on the Amazon incubator actually runs quite high and it can be tricky to reduce the humidity level in this incubator. One of the ways of doing that is the little vent on the top, just opening it up a few times a day, up to four times a day, 15 minutes at a time is really good. You may need to do it more. The other thing I don't necessarily like about this one compared to the Hubivator is the Hubivator has quite a large window that you can see in and watch the, hatch, the hatching of the chicks. This one's a bit trickier just because you've got the um, the roller mechanism at the side, you can't necessarily take it out that easily. And that's why we cut this little part here so it could slide out easily and we could watch the hatching through the plastic. So that's one thing I really do like about the Hubivator is the large window. The other thing that's quite obvious about this incubator compared to the Hubivator in which we are reviewing is that this holds a lot less eggs. So if you wanna do a larger hatch, definitely need a larger machine. And the Hubivator, I believe it holds about 60 eggs. So we have come to an end of our comparison video between this Hubivator incubator and the 16 egg incubator in which we have been using. So one of the things that we found that we did really like about this Hubivator incubator was the large window. As you can see, we can see everything that's going on. We can watch the hatching as it happens. There's also a lot less parts to this machine, which means it is a lot easier to clean than the Amazon egg incubator. It also holds a lot more eggs. I believe it holds about 60 eggs. So if you're into doing larger batches of eggs, this might be one for you to consider. That being said, I don't believe that the hatch rate was all that different in percentage between this Hubivator incubator and the Amazon. I don't think there was a big enough difference that would make me want to go out and purchase this incubator just by what I've seen so far. And it actually made me realize that I do really like our little cheap Amazon egg incubator. Some of the cons about this machine, um, it didn't come with rollers, so you had to pay for that separately. So I, if you are interested in this one, definitely get the rollers. So some of the cons um, that I found with this incubator that I don't like, is the fact that it is all styrofoam. The Amazon egg incubator does definitely have the styrofoam around the machine, but it's essentially, it's all plastic. This machine is literally all styrofoam with parts in the inside. The reason why I'm saying this is there's definitely um, cracks, um, just breakdown from being stored possibly if you have 
other animals or rodents that could poke holes in this. We did find that there is a few holes on the side we had to tape up. Also, we believe there's a leak that we found out after our hatch was done underneath and we couldn't see it. So I'm not sure that I really like that it is completely styrofoam because it does break down over time. So that's one con that I didn't like. The other thing is there's a lot of tiny little holes all underneath this, which is really good for airflow. Um, I'm not sure why they're there. I can show you. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a bunch of little holes right here. There's one here. So there's about three to four holes on each side and I'm not sure why they're there, but it was definitely leaking all over the place. Now we had this setting on a, like a wooden bench and it had almost destroyed part of it with the leaking and the, there was some molding because the water there and such. So I'm, I don't like that about this. Also, it was really hard to keep track of the humidity in this. We had a humidity reader, but I found with all the holes, like I said, each side has, side has about six, um, three to four holes on each side. And so I found that the humidity kept going down quickly, where it's funny because in the Amazon incubator, we find that it's hard to keep the humidity level down. In this one, it's a little harder to keep the humidity level up. Overall, I think with my comparison, if I had to say which one did I like best, which one would I buy again, I would buy the Amazon egg incubator um, a second time. So I wanna thank you for joining us in this comparison video. I'm gonna take you now to see some of the little chicks that we have hatched out. And if you haven't caught my step-by-step -step instruction on how to use the Amazon egg incubator, I'll put that down in the description below. So thank you for joining us here again at Plowman's Backyard. So if you are looking at purchasing any of the materials in which we use in our videos, such as the incubators, as well as the heat plate in which we use, or anything like the watering containers, anything like that that we use, we will leave a link in the description below and you can click on that and you can purchase it easily through the Amazon links.